Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another SWOT analysis in Europa Universalis 4. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We are going to be taking a look at a random nation and sort of breaking down their diplomatic ecosystem. We're going to be looking at their internal stability and economy. We're going to be sort of devising a strategy and opening moves for that country. This is not going to be a, a guide to how to play that country because fundamentally this is going to be a random nation, likely a nation I've never played before. So I'm not an expert at any nation in the game, right? I'm not necessarily even an expert at the game, but we're going to be going through a process. I'm going to be showing you guys a process for analyzing the ecosystem, making decisions, and building a strategy. We're going to be building a strategy from scratch based on what we know about our situation, about the information that we can extract from our situation. So this is not going to be for complete beginners. I am going to kind of assume that people do somewhat know how to play the game that are watching this. But it's also going to be not for complete experts, right? It's going to be for people that are trying to get better at the game and level up a little bit in, in sort of how they can process the game. Because you don't just look at the ecosystem at the start of the game. It's a very important time to take a break and, and try to figure out what's going on with your country. But you're going to be doing that throughout the game as well. You're going to be doing that every so often after every war. You're just reassessing, okay, what's changed? What does our stability look like? So on and so forth. So we're going to be doing that at the start, though with a random nation and trying to develop a strategy and opening moves for a random nation. Let's see who we get here. Bengal. Boom. Never played Bengal before. I do know that Bengal is not particularly weak, though, so this should be relatively... I don't want to say straightforward, because I think we're going to have so many good opportunities that this could be a little bit interesting. The closest I've played to Bengal is I've played... One of the first games I ever played was a Bamanis. That was way before they changed everything with the Dharma. We are playing with the 1.3 Emperor... DLC and patch, and we have all the DLC, all of the DLCs active. Miwar, I've played as Miwar before as well. I've played as Delhi as well, but I've never played as Bengal. What's the situation with Bengal here? So we could just sort of go around right off the bat and just sort of go into the diplomatic map mode. Looks like we have a core on this province. This is Orissa. Orissa is not a particularly weak nation because they have all these little vassal subjects and they have a decent amount of sort of coastal land. Not a super weak nation, but we do have a, a core on this on this land. So that would be a reason to go to war with Arissa very early on. But that would probably be a pretty tough war. Uh, mono a mono. Harder still if they can get some good alliances. Um, if we just sort of click around, we can see uh, Jean Poor has, uh, has rivaled us. We're definitely not going to be pronouncing everything correctly, guys. Arissa has rivaled us too. In fact, let's just go into here. Let's go into our own diplomacy screen and see. Vigianagar's rivaled us. Athuthai has rivaled us. Uh, that would have been kind of a nice alliance, probably. Uh, Athuthai is actually a little far away. I don't know if we actually care that much. Bommanis could be really, really good. Although Bommanis doesn't like us because I think Bommanis is actually Shia. So they kind of have an interesting sort of religious thing going on. We are Sunni, although a lot of the provinces up here are Hindu. Now, Delhi is a very powerful nation. However, at the start of the game, Delhi doesn't really do that well because they have a very angry vassal that's likely to take them over, right? If we click on Delhi here, we see that they have a lot of cores in this area, so they could take this stuff back very quickly and get very strong very fast. However, this uh, vassal right here tends to come eat them up and then form Delhi, basically. So we might actually have to see if Delhi can actually win that or not. Miwar is a relatively strong nation. They don't particularly like us too much. Malwa actually does seem to like us, uh, but they're in the middle of this sort of mess. And they might actually sort of have their own diplomatic issues. Gujarat doesn't like them. Bahmanis doesn't like them. Uh, nobody really likes them except for some of these smaller nations. Hmm. It's a little bit tricky. So it's like, does Delhi like us because we're both Sunni? It's like, yeah, Jaunpur would have been a good alliance if only just as a temporary alliance because they're also Sunni. Miwar, hmm. Miwar is pretty strong. They do have a gold province, it, it looks like. Maybe at least, a, yeah. The only gold province in the entire of India, it looks like. Malwa, Miwar, those guys have definitely rivaled each other, I assume. No, they haven't. We could actually ally Mal Malwa, but they're a little far away to help us with any sort of bordering wars here. If I check out Jaunpur, they don't... These guys seem to be independent. So this could be a good opportunity to attack into these guys early. There's a lot of little nations that I think we're just going to be able to beat up. It's just kind of a matter of where do we want to go? What's our trade situation look like? But the Bengal trade node does mean that we're going to want to take some of these extra trade centers here. 
Um, some of these are controlled by smaller little nations in the surrounding area. Orissa being a bigger nation, but this looks like a good obvious sort of area for expansion here, down this way, and, and sort of going into Pegu and, and such. That looks pretty decent going going west and then sort of just try to survive uh, from the west, you know, survive west. So many little nations here, right? So many little nations. Who's our, who's our actual ally going to be? Ming? I mean, what's the likelihood of Ming allying? That's pretty low. Pretty low. These guys could ally us. What is their diplomatic situation? It looks like Athithaya doesn't really like them. Presumably, they're going to be a tributary of Ming. So that means that they're not going to get beat up by Athithaya, who is not... Oh, no, Athithaya is a tributary of Ming. Okay. Okay. Timurids, do you like us? That could be... Timurids are a little bit unstable at the start of the game, so I don't know if we want to ally them. I'm just clicking on things, seeing what we can do here. Balmanis, what about an alliance with you? That would be really good. The thing is, that negative 1,000, we could we could undo that, right? If, we're, if they're willing to sort of get like a royal marriage or something. If we can just boost up their opinion a little bit. Balmanis is not impossible. It's only a minus 51 if we get rid of that 1,000 negative modifier. I think we potentially go for the alliance with Malwa. How many diplomat? We have four diplomatic slots. Yeah. I think we maybe go Malwa just to get like an alliance, like just to get one. And then we butter up these guys over here, Lan Yang, and hope for the best. No, I don't think they're going anywhere. Let's butter up Bombanis and just see if we can like convince them to like befriend us, I guess. Uh, we're going to need our other sort of dude to set up a spy network. However, before we do that, we might want to look at our own missions here. All provinces in the Orissa area owned by Bengal. Hmm. That's going to be a little ambitious, especially considering we don't have claims on any of that right now. Do we get any free claims? Total army size of 100% uh, force limit. Development is at 200 well, that's going to require conquering land. We're not going to be able to develop 23 land that quickly. Military technology, at least four. So this is this is a futuristic thing in the future, but that is going to give us a lot of claims on sort of this region here of John Poor, which is good. I'm just wondering if we're going to get free claims to go down here or not, or if we need to make these ourselves. So, so we have a mission to go up here and beat up these guys. That'll give us free claims on a lot of this area here, it seems, like all of this area here. So beating up these guys is actually feeding directly into... Yeah, beating these guys up here feeds directly into a big mission to give us a lot of free claims. So I think we're going to want to spend a, a diplomat down here building up a spy network, but definitely a diplomat up here. This is, this is where we want to go. This is what our mission tells us to conquer first. It's a thing that we'll be able to do right away. These guys already hate us. We could just sort of do that. We could also do Vigianagar. That might help us get an alliance with Balmanis because I'm assuming Balmanis and Vigianagar do not like each other. Uh, the other thing we could potentially do is Orissa is going to be a long-term rival for sure. We know that uh, we're allying Malwa. Yeah, they don't like Balmanis. They are rival to Balmanis. So that actually is going to basically make it nigh impossible to get an alliance with Balmanis, unfortunately. That's going to make it basically impossible. I think we are going to have to work on Lin Yang instead. Yeah, Balmanis is at minus 68. I, I, don't, I don't see that going our way anymore. Although we're not actually getting a negative modifier here. It might just not have updated yet. We have 18,000 troops. That's going to be significantly more than what uh, Kuchir has. And, and what these guys have, it just kind of depends on what kind of uh, relationships they can build. Obviously, the only threats in the area right here is Jean Poor and Orissa, but they probably won't attack directly into us unless they have a good opportunity to call in their own allies. They're not going to want to go 1v1 against us. We could look and see just kind of what their uh, military strength looks like, right? Looking at our rivals. 27,000, we can build up to 23,000. And then Orissa's at 22,000. However, they have all these little vassal states. Are these vassal states loyal? Barely. Barely. Something could go wrong here. 
with these vassal states, especially if we won a decisive battle against the Orisan army, then these vassals would probably feel more powerful and emboldened to not respect their overlord. So Orissa is kind of scary, kind of not scary, because each of these is going to provide about three to 4,000 troops. We have an event here to sort of decide how we want to do... Um, we can get extra tax modifier, uh, core creation cost reduction. I think initially, diplomatic relations, or reputation, I mean. Dang, our economy is looking good. Our economy is looking really good. We have a fort over here, but honestly, it's not a good province for a fort. It's just grasslands. Our capital's also got a fort that's described. This is terrible. There's some jungle provinces here. Like, this would be a good fort. Re this would be a really good fort here. This would be a fantastic fort right here. I don't like this cap this fort right here. We're just going to keep our capital fort, and that's that. We're going to boost our economy even more. We could do this to get more taxation, or we could try to save a little bit of core creation cost. That could be really good, because I think we're going to be going on the con conquest side of things. Diplomatic relations. I mean, I don't know if we're even going to be able to get up to our four, full four there, to be honest. Let's focus on military. We have a decent leader. We don't need to make him, and we have a good heir. A decent ruler and a good heir. Construction cost reduction. I don't know if we're going to be able to utilize that. We'll have to get a few techs before we can. Our heir is pretty good, though. Our heir is pretty good. National ideas give us infantry combat ability and more national manpower. Very good. Very good, actually. We have a lot of different sort of state shenanigans going on here. I think we are going to want to sort of kick things off, though, by just sort of like stealing land to get above that 30%. We could sort of call a diet and see what we can do here. We have essentially the nobility as the emirs, the clergy as the ulema, and we have sort of some different little interesting little factions here as well. Um, these guys, I believe these are the dudes that uh, help you with the fact that our country has a little bit of instability when it comes to, we have a lot of Hindu. Uh, I think these guys are the guys that will help us with the Hindu um, sort of fact that we have a lot of poor religious unity. So if we click on these guys, they'll give us more tolerance. They'll give us more religious unity and more tolerance of heathens. That could be really good. That could be really good to just sort of sure up our sort of uh, initial unrest situation. But for the most part, everybody's happy. We have national unrest a little bit, and we have a poor religious unity, but everybody seems to be living kumbaya right now. Yeah, this is where we could fully basically embrace the Hindu, the Hindu provinces. But I think ideally, if we could convert them, that's going to be better. So if we go look at the Ulema here, we might be able to find some like missionary strength options. I, I don't want to increase the the um, the tolerance for the heretics and heathens by that much, just to increase the missionary strength just a little bit. I don't like that as much. We have a piety situation here because we are Sunni. Getting moving towards legalism will be good. So I think getting some more influence with the clergy is good because they do like us right now. This is kind of an easy thing to click as well. We actually could potentially afford uh, advisors, so maybe we want to do that and actually increase their influence even more. And we could actually get sort of an administrative advisor that would be rather cheap. Oh, if this guy, if this production guy was a level one, that'd be a no-brainer. That would be a no-brainer. Instead, I think we're just going to get prestige guy. That's going to be fine. We can afford him. It's going to be great. We're going to get a cost reduction on him because of this benefit. This will give 14% land ownership, uh, giving a special unit force limit. Okay. So we have some extra special units that we can get with these guys, it looks like, potentially. And that's maybe only if we can actually, like, if we give them some land, because I don't know if they have any land right now. But they do have land. Special unit force limit. I don't know if we have to click on land and see if we can just sort of raise the banners from these areas. I, d I don't know. This is something that's a little new to me here. Yeah, we have elephant archers. These might be the special units. The elephant archers might be our special units here. What does it say about the elephant archers?
I guess we'd have to go into here and actually see the difference between... Actually, no, those are just a slightly different flavor. I'm not sure exactly what how we can maximize. The estates have changed everything, right? This estates is... I understand this if we're playing in Europe, but I don't quite understand this if we're playing over here. Wow, this is kind of cool. We need more uh, uh, army tradition to be able to enact this, but holy cow, just get an extra land leader fire? Fire is not as important, but still, that's really cool to get that permanently, though, going forward. I kind of like that. Sort of do that to give them a little bit more influence, get them a little bit happier. The truth is we might want to do this, too, but I don't want to give them that much land. Let's go over here to the nobility, which is kind of the classic. Military cost advisor reduction. Do we have any good military advisors? Maintenance modifier guy could actually pay for himself, especially if we make him cheaper. I like that. Let's do this. This is also going to give us a lot more manpower at the cost of a little bit of taxation. Our economy is really good. So we'll actually sort of shift it towards more manpower. Let's grab this guy because he's going to be cheaper. Economy is still doing fantastic. Our economy as Bengal is really, really solid, actually. I'm really, really impressed. Right of Council is like a kind of an early game button just to kind of boost up the influence of these guys and have them be giving us a little bit better stuff. Development cost, state maintenance reduction. Wow, that seems pretty good. Let's do that. Um, I'm not really sure if there's much of a, a downside to this, guys. Like as long as we're not giving away our crownland. Yearly corruption change could be kind of cool at the cost of man. This is really neat. This is some good stuff. Production efficiency, power cost increase. That's not good, so we don't want to do that. 20 local autonomy. Minus 50% local development cost. Setters of trade in Bengal trade zone. Gain three mercantilism. Kind of an interesting button here that I think potentially we might want to hit at some point, but it does increase a little bit of local autonomy in Bengal. Um, presumably in the state of Bengal. It gives us a lot of mercantilism. And it also gives us uh, lower development costs in regions. This could be something you'd want to flip on and off kind of thing. Light ship cost. That could be kind of neat. Extra ship trade power, that could be kind of cool. I, we do have a little bit of a navy, and we could expand that. I don't think we want to give many of our monopolies, though. I think that's looking fine. If we look over here for something we can do here, sometimes these guys will give us uh, actual claims on neighboring areas. This says to get Miwar's opinion up. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that, because I think Miwar and Malwa do not like each other. Is that true? No. Actually, Malwa and Miwar are totally fine. We could try to butter up Miwar. That's an option. That is an option. That would give us a 50% reduced cost improved relations guy, which is, I guess, okay. That's good because he's 50% cost, but we don't really care about the Diplo that much. This just has us sort of developing a province. Is this a province that we'd actually want to develop? We can look here and sort of search for Bagalapur. Bagalapur. Is this like a special set of trade or anything? Um, no, but it is a silk province, which is pretty nice. It's relatively cheap to develop here, so we could totally develop that up to five and get some benefits from that. Increase their loyalty, get some prestige. And then we could also increase tax in a, in a different province. Yeah, I think actually, you know, developing that province up a little bit, I don't think there's going to be any issue in that at all. We have some things that we could hit here. Uh, missionary strength versus heretics, that's going to be good, but realistically, these are heathens, right? The Hindu are heathens, and I don't know if we really have that many heretics near us, but I don't think there's any disqualifying reason to, to hit that button. It's just sort of a bonus. Uh, national unrest modifier is good. Move towards legalism. We already want to move towards legalism. Yearly prestige is good. More legalism pushing, right? So we're moving more towards legalism, which is nice because we get some good manpower a national ta tax modifier and technology cost reduction. That's if we're at 100. If we could see here the modifiers we're getting right now, but it's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. I am liking our situation so far. We haven't rolled a general yet, so we're going to need to do this. Isn't there a way to potentially get cheaper generals? Oh, we don't have the army tradition to enact the uh, emirs in the officer corps. So we can't do that quite yet. So we're just going to have to roll these generals just as is. I don't want to make our leaders generals. A 3 two, one, one. Hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. The funny thing is, heck, we don't even have to not pay for our troops. We could also 
break our fort here in this province because that is a capital fort. So even if we do not pay for the for the castle cost, we'll be able to actually still have a basic garrison here. So we're not going to get blindsided by this, which is pretty nice. And then if we go to war, we'll just that'll automatically turn on, or we'll we'll make sure to turn that on uh, when we go to war. So we actually are wow! I can't believe we're making five ducats a month with our standing army at full strength. We have some ducats here. I think we just keep building up um, our army. I, I think there's a way to get some special units, but I'm not quite sure how we do that. Somehow with the estates, I don't know if it's because we haven't sort of buttered up um, the Rajputs enough. Rajput regiments. Rajput regiments. That gives it that, that requires crownland. Let's give him Crownland and see. Fourteen percent land ownership. Giving a special unit land force limit plus seven percent. Hmm. Hmm. Do we now have some? We do have some special units now. I believe these guys, if I'm not mistaken, they cost the same amount. We can only raise two of them, but they're sort of an elite unit. They cost a little bit more, but they're kind of an elite unit. I believe they have a lot of discipline. So we could raise a couple of those guys with our money. I think alternatively, we're gonna, we have a great economy, right? So we'll be able to build some more ships. We'll be able to want to continue to build up our army up to our force limit. We're going to be looking to go to war with these guys very early. Let's get those guys grouped up in the capital and we can have them start drilling since we don't even have to, like, not pay for them. Uh, I don't... These... He we're actually paying... Wow, we have three heavy ships over here. Holy cow. Let's make sure we're protecting trade in Bengal. Um, let's also take a look. Let's actually mothball these guys, because I don't think we're going to be fighting anybody in these regions right here. But the fact that we start with three heavy ships is like, wow. Our economy is booming right now. This is insane. This is insane. Bengal is a very strong economic sort of power. We got a lot of trade flowing in here. It's really, really nice. What are our merchants up to, actually? We haven't checked on those yet. Having a merchant down here would be really good, but they're out of our trades, uh, trade range. So instead, we're pushing trade from here, and we are also pushing trade from up here. That's kind of all we can do. When we get more trade range, I think we're going to want to pull from Malacca. We have a 9% trade power down here. There's a lot of money in Malacca. So moving more of that up here to Bengal is going to be really, really good uh, in the future. But for now, I think our merchants are doing logical things. It's always good to check on that because those merchants, man, sometimes they're a, a little bit of a doofus. Six ducats a month. That's what their army even being paid for. That is crazy. That is crazy. We could try to start working on some conversions. It's very cheap to do this. It will take a while to do this. We could look and see uh, exactly where this is. And what we could do is we can enact enforce religious unity as a state policy in this region. And that should increase that significantly, right? That's almost doubling the, the rate at which we can convert there. That is going to create a significant amount of unrest. Well, it's not a significant amount, but it's going to create unrest here, hopefully. But, the, but it should go away by the time this is actually converted. So that's going to be totally fine. And guys, it actually kind of looks like we have done the opening moves with Bengal. What we should do is let's run the game for a little bit as per the tradition with the SWOT analysis. Uh, Bengal seems to be doing well. Let's just let it run. Let's see if uh, our first target for war, which is these guys over here, sort of build up. Um... I think we decided the Balmanis is no hopefulness with Balmanis at all. So let's actually sort of try to build a relationship with these guys over here. We're going to pull back Balmanis. And we're going to have us building up a spy network on these guys down here. Since it didn't look like we actually got immediate claims on these guys. So we're going to have to do that old-fashioned style. We might want to actually save up for one of these guys because we're just so filthy rich. But this guy's not really going to help us that much. Let's get these guys grouped up and start drilling. And we're doing that just because we're really an affluent country. We are essentially, I'm basically just sort of, what is, what alliance? There we go. That's their only alliance. So opening moves are going to be to attack uh, Coach here. 
and beat up uh, a Sam and Coach together. That should be a pretty clean war. I don't see any reason why this will not go in our favor here. These guys are asking us for a royal marriage. I don't think we really want to butter them up that much. We could try to get a royal marriage with uh, Malwa, though, as our ally over here. Just to kind of sure that up a little bit. Yeah, they're gonna want to. They are gonna want to ally us eventually. And I think these guys look. I don't know what's the actual power of these guys here because I'm sure they're in danger, right? Like Athuthaya is their enemy. So these guys are. I mean, what's your alliance network looking like? I mean, it's not great. That's not great. I'm just gonna look these guys up a little bit. Click. I'm just a little bit worried that they're a little bit more. Um, they look bigger than they are here. Lan Yang here. Uh, 17,000 force level, that's not bad. I, I think if, if they get our, if they're allied to us, that's going to be totally fine. They're going to appear, um, they're going to appear sort of strong enough, right? Strong enough, at least. Let's continue to build up to our force limit because that's going to give us, wait a second, isn't that giving us something if we go to our force limit? No, that's, we also have to increase our development though. That's, that's the future. If we get a little bit more money here, I think we keep building trade ships. Keep expanding our trade empire here. All of these troops can sort of group up here. And we are very... Let's stop drilling. Just because we are ready to go to war with these guys once we get the claim on this nation here. They have not expanded their... Yeah, they know what we're doing. They know what's up here. Some legitimacy and move... No. Don't need legitimacy. We already are max. We want to move towards legalism. Legalism. And we can get the we can get the claim on either of these provinces. This is the better one. It's a higher development one. So we'll get the claim on this. And I think for the most part, guys, let's win this war, and that'll be our opening moves as Bengal. How did these guys actually fare out? Let's get the spy network. Uh the fabricate claim here. That's an interesting question. Do we care which one we go for here? No, this is the Trade Center. Higher development, and it's the Trade Center. If we check here, do we say, we, let's go to war with these guys? Athuthaya. They actually did ally Athuthaya, or is it because of a tributary thing? Are you guys allied, or is it... Yeah, you guys are allied to Athuthaya. Really? Wow. Crazy. Crazy. These guys are not, though. So, opening moves. Let's wait till the... Uh, so wait till the end of the month here in case a Sam. Yeah, these guys did not build up. There's a little bit of an issue right now, guys, with uh, Emperor, where the I think nations are not building up to their their force limit like they should be. We could see here that we overwhelm these guys just massively. This could be a very easy war. Um, and I think this is it. Let's just essentially get to the position where, whoa, that is kind of a problem. Okay, they're sneaking away. I'm waiting to have these rebels join up. Bengal Delta. Where's that? Bengal Delta. Over here. Hmm. Basically, I'm kind of just trying to uh, sort of just lay down, like, I don't know why it's not letting us... I guess it's just saying it's faster to go this direction. I don't know. These guys are just being weird. If they sneak back around here, that's going to be kind of annoying, but... These guys are going to have to come down here to deal with the rebellion. That does seem to be farmland, so we don't care too much about these guys rising up. We're just kind of letting that sit for a second. Yeah, these guys have occupied that province. Those guys have appeared. Okay, so get, actually this modifier will only last for five years because we're an embezzler. That's fine. Let's, let's beat them here. This is in the jungle, unfortunately, but we should get a decisive battle, and they have stack wipe. There we go. Battle's over. The war is won. Unfortunately, this province is going to be sieged. Ugh. 
What did that do to our light ship progress exactly? Did that just remove our light ship? Did that literally just remove our light ship? I don't know. So what we need to do is we need to bring this guy around. He's got a siege pip. And we need to bring this guy around over here so that we can actually sort of siege down uh, these provinces here. And we might want to take our cavalry or our elephants, so to speak, and actually use them to... Uh, let's do up there to siege that. And let's take these guys that just go on a looting fest. There we go. The opening war is won, guys. So we could take all of this land up here. And well, if we take it, we're just going to take this land because that's going to give it, we'll probably white piece these guys out. White piece these guys out, take this land here. That's going to give us a mission to take all of this land up here. We should be able to uh, very quickly attack these guys who are only allied to a bunch of smaller nations that we could also exploit the fact that we could attack these guys. That's actually really, really cool. In fact, knowing that, I don't know if we're going to get a claim on this for free. We could double check this really quick. I don't want to go too long with this episode. I just wanted to show that the uh, sort of the opening moves here a little bit, even though I think that's a little bit of a stretch beyond what we're trying to do. We're trying to just assess the situation. We're not necessarily trying to like play the game or like, you know, prove that this works or whatever, right? We're just doing our best to assess the situation. But what is it? Yeah, I conquered these guys. That's going to give us claims on these. So yeah, actually we'll get a free claim on these guys, which is cool, but we will not get a claim on this country. So let's build up a spy network here. Build up a spy network there, actually. Uh, these guys look like they are far enough along that we should be able to ally these dudes, I would hope. But we are at war. So when we end the war here, we'll be able to ally these guys. And that is our opening moves. We've allied Malwa. We're going to ally these guys. We'll continue to butter up nations and get stronger and hopefully be more appealing to nations as we get stronger. We could basically consolidate all of this region almost right off the bat, which is really, really nice. Our next war is going to be against these guys. That'll call in these smaller nations, and we'll be able to just sort of scoop up all these little nations right here and continue to sort of expand that way. Uh, it doesn't look like any important trade provinces in these regions, though. That's kind of a bummer. What the heck? Are there, like, no trade? Are there literally no, like, important provinces of trade in this entire trade node or something? It's just, like, Bengal has all of them or something? It's crazy. Crazy. Actually, this is a level 3... This is a world port at the start of the game. Wow, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Trade efficiency guy? A half cost trade efficiency guy? Let's do it. Let's do it. We're losing money over here. We're definitely losing money, but I think that's because we're reinforcing a lot, right? We're spending three and a half ducats just to reinforce. So assuming we're not reinforcing our troops, we'll, we'll be okay. There we go. We're making money while we're at war. That's a good sign. Making money while we're at war. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out and watching this Bengal sort of random nation, random nation Europa Universalis SWOT analysis. I hope to do many more of these, guys. But that is sort of like developing a strategy for Bengal. This is not how to play Bengal. This is not about a strategy specifically for Bengal. It's about, exer it's about the exercise of being able to assess the ecosystem and just see what's going on. Who likes us? Who doesn't like us? What's our internal situation? How's our economy? How can we leverage that? Where's our opportunities for conquest and expansion? What is our goal as a nation? What are, in fact, our strengths really is just our economy and the fact that we're in a big major center trade area and we dominate the trade area that we're in and uh, we have different missions that will sort of send us up this way and we're just kind of going with the flow. We're just learning what Bengal is all about. Never played Bengal before, but there you go. We have now sort of done opening moves, and initial sort of analysis for Bengal. Thanks everybody for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.